everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about central dogma, the process of having information in DNA and actually express that information so that your cells can function, so that you have different types of cells, so that your body is developed into, um, you know, a, an actual body, so that your hands could have digits. Everything, all the jobs that are being done in your body, well, the majority of the jobs, are being done by proteins. So um, let's first take a look uh, at this quick review of um, the DNA structure. We have the phosphate group, which points outward, and they're uh, the ones that are connecting uh, each strand of DNA. So this one is one strand of DNA on the left side. You can see that each nucleotide is connected through the phosphate group. And then you have the five carbon sugar in terms of DNA is called deoxyribose, and we have the bases that are facing each other. You have the complementary base pair uh, of DNA, A, T, and C, and G. So um, let's talk about proteins real quick before um, we dive into how the process of transcription and translation works. So with proteins, well, what are they? Uh, they come from a gene. So genes tells proteins how they're supposed to be made. Um, so proteins are kind of, we call it protein products because genes can provide instruction for making proteins. So if you remember the definition of a gene, it's, it's, it's a segment of DNA made of sequence of bases coded for proteins. So proteins control everything a body does. Um, you know, all of your traits, all of the, your internal organs, you know, your cells supposed to be doing whatever, the cells supposed to be divide, not divide, um, all of that is done by proteins. So it's really important that we learn about proteins that, and that you understand how proteins work. Proteins are the expression of your DNA or your genes, meaning that the DNA itself only provides instruction on how to build the proteins, but the actual, you know, what is this DNA actually telling your body to do? Um, how do we do this work? Proteins are the ones that are going to express, that are going to show um, your entire body how things should work. But DNAs cannot make proteins alone. It needs some help from another uh, nucleic acid called RNA. So DNA, RNA, protein. DNA, and RNA, protein. We talked about that before. Now, moving on. Um, so if you were to look at this picture right here, it shows you the processes that we've learned. DNA can replicate. We call it DNA replication, which is done by DNA polymerase, and there's the DNA unzipping and all that. Um, we'll have a video on that as well. DNA uh, is transcribed or into RNA, or this process is called transcription, and we have RNA being translated into proteins, um, and then eventually it's the proteins that allow you to have a certain trait. So here's a comparison chart between DNA and RNA. DNA is double helix, RNA is single helix, or single stranded, you wouldn't call it a helix anymore. DNA is, has deoxyribose as its sugar, RNA has its ribose, and DNA has ATCG, RNA has AUCG. All right. So protein synthesis, DNA has to send information to RNA to make the protein. And then proteins, um, when we're making the proteins, we're really connecting the amino acids together. So, so the amino acids are the monomers of proteins. Um, as you can see over here, these can be represented, these cir circular um, structures can be represented as amino acids. So your ribosome, We'll talk about that. The ribosomes will read the codes on the RNA and connect different amino acids together, right? So let's say if I were to tell you we, we have a blue marker and then a brown marker and a red marker and a black marker and then another blue marker, another red marker, right? This sequence of information uh, has to be told by something and the DNA has this sequence of ATCG whatever and which can be transcribed into the RNA sequence, which can be translated into the amino acid sequence, and then the amino acid can fold into a protein. And proteins are made at the ribosome. Ribosome is an organelle that floats around um, the cytoplasm. Some ribosomes are, well, when you have the rough ER, rough endoplasmic reticulum, they're rough because their ribosomes attach to it as well. So you don't have to know the difference between the free-floating ribosomes and the ribosomes on the rough ER uh, just yet, um, but just know there you can found, find all the ribosomes in the, um, the cytoplasm or the cytosol. They're the same thing, pretty much. So this picture gives you kind of a brief outline of how transcription and translation works. We have DNA, and the DNA has to unwind. So as you can see, they're, they're all wounded up right here, but then it has to unwind. 
in order to allow other proteins to come in and does uh, the transcription process. And transcription as these RNA bases onto the DNA bases, but you also have to break the hydrogen bonds in between the DNA bases and separate the two strands before RNA can be made. Otherwise, there's no space for it, right? So as you can see, these two strands are separated and the RNA nucleotides are added. So how it works is that if you were to have DNA uh, T base, it will match with an A base in RNA because RNA does have A. And then if you were to have an A, uh, for DNA, the RNA corresponding complementary base pair has to be U because normally for DNA you would have A matched with T but instead because RNA there is no T, you have to match A with U. Alright, so if I were to give you a DNA uh, sequence, I'll tell you whether we are going to do the transcription on uh, using the top strand or the, the bottom strand. I'll tell you which strand to use and then you should be able to match the complementary base pairs um, just like this. And then uh, you will be able to do translation, and I'll talk about how that works as well. So um, this video is really wonderful. Uh, if you have not watched this video because you missed class or if you need a, a review, this video is posted. Um, make sure that you do watch it. It's really good. Okay, so the overall process is central dogma, DNA to RNA to protein. DNA is used to make messenger RNA. It's called messenger RNA because it kind of sends the message from the nucleus where all the information is contained to the cytoplasm to, in order to make protein, in order to you know, build your house and build this Lego house and actually do work. So that's why we call this particular RNA within this sequence of events, DNA RNA protein, we call it mRNA messenger RNA. And DNA to RNA, this process is made using uh, protein actually. <laughs> There's just pro proteins floating around all over the place doing all the jobs. So even the process of making DNA into RNA is done by a protein called RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase makes RNA and DNA polymerase does DNA replication. This process, DNA to RNA, happens in the nucleus because DNA cannot leave the nucleus. And then mRNA, after it makes, um, after it's made from the DNA, it will leave the nucleus. This flows out from the nuclear pore, and it will go to the ribosome, where which is something that you can find in the cytoplasm. So, um, if you were to look at this picture right here, you can see this whole process happening. We have transcription happening inside of the nucleus. We have DNA. We have RNA made from the DNA, and we have. Um, RNA splicing, I'll talk about that in a second. So you have this mature mRNA coming out of the nuclear pore, going into the cytoplasm inside of the, the what did I say? The cytoplasm and the, the ribosome in the cytoplasm and uh, making a polypeptide using single amino acids being carried by something called tRNA, which we'll talk about on Wednesday. Um, anything else? Nothing else. Okay, moving on. Uh, here are some review questions that are that should be the same as your review sheet. So let's take another look at transcription um, in a little bit more detail. So DNA is transcribed into mRNA. This happens inside the nucleus. DNA cannot leave the nucleus, as we said. DNA is unzipped, like we said, and the mRNA is uh, assembled doing by using the complementary base pair A to U, uh, T to A, C to G, G to C, A to U. Anyway. And then remember, RNA has U instead of T. So if I were to give you a sequence um, of whatever, A, T, C, G, C, T, you know it's DNA because there's T in it. But if I were to give you A, U, C, G, U, you know that is RNA because there's U in it. And then RNA is single-stranded, something we already talked about. Now, um, after the RNA is first made by, uh, you, by, by the DNA nucleotide, using the molecule called RNA polymerase, we have to process the RNA a little bit more before translation can be done. And we call this RNA splicing. So if you look right here, we have axons being separated by introns in between. So these introns are going to be cut and then basically trashed. Um, these introns actually have certain purposes, but you're not going to learn about that until AP Bio if you come to my class a few years later. But as you can see from this picture, we're rejoining the exons and getting rid of the introns. And this process requires the RNA to kind of be chopped up a little bit. And this process is called RNA splicing. 
this makes what we call a mature mRNA um, that is mature enough to be actually made into a protein. So after transcription, this mRNA is going to leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome in the cytoplasm or the cytosol in order to make protein. So again, in this picture, you can see DNA unwinding the uh, the hydrogen bonds are broken, RNA is made from the DNA, RNA float out of the nuclear pore and go to the ribosome right here. And then what happens after is that the DNA will reform uh, these hydrogen bonds again to go back to uh, the, the normal DNA shape. So continue on. Translation happens at the ribosome, and ribosome has a piece of it called the rRNA. Um, something you should know about. Um, so the RNA is kind of an accessory of the ribosome that allows the ribosome to actually function. That's all you have to know about RNA. And then um, when the mRNA is at the ribosome, the ribosome reads the mRNA three bases at a time, and each three bases is called a codon. So if you look at these words on, um, on the PowerPoint right here, you can read words, right? We read four letters at a time, and then three letters at a time, and four letters at a time, and six letters at a time, and you know how to read a sentence and each one of the words because there are spaces in between. However, RNA and DNA has no spaces in between, but ribosomes automatically knows that each word uh, should be three bases. So as you can see on the right side, AUG, that's three letters, one codon, coding for one amino acid. ACG right here is the next three bases, one codon, coding for another amino acid. So in total, if you look at this structure right here, there are 321 um, RNA bases that equals to seven codons, and it will make um, seven amino acids in the sequence uh, that is coded for. So now here comes the problem. How do you know what amino acid each type of each codon is supposed to code for? You will look at an mRNA codon amino acid chart. So first off, you can see that this chart is talking about RNA because there's U in it instead of T. So whenever you're making amino acids, since we cannot go from DNA to amino acid, we have to go from RNA to amino acid, this chart that you're reading also has RNA, um, so you can make amino acid. So what you do is that you read the first base on the left, second base going across, and then find third base on the right. Basically, you're trying to find the exact codon that I asked you to look for, and then you make um, an amino acid. So if you look right here, um, let's say AUG, for example, you find on the left side A, and then you look across, you see U, and then you find AUG codes for methionine, which is also the star codon, which signals where translation is supposed to start. Let's say you do um, CCC. So you look, at, look for the first base on the left, this is C, look across, you find C again for second base, and then C again on the, the, the right. CCC codes for this proline, uh, which is also an amino acid. Now let's continue on with our learning. Um, we have, uh, let's, get, let's try another example. Let's say you are trying to find this one codon called GCU, and you're trying to figure out what amino acid this codon codes for. So you would look for the first letter, G. On the left side, you find G, and then C, uh, you look to the right, you find all the Cs, and then you find GCU right here, coding for alanine, um, that a specific amino acid. So then, continuing on, how many different amino acids are there in total? There are 20 different amino acids. That's just a number that you have to remember. And then, true or false question, an amino acid can only be coded by one type of codon. That is incorrect, um, because as you can see from our previous chart, which is the one that you have, uh, with you in your binder, supposedly, you could have multiple codons coding for the exact same amino acid uh, as such. And there's a reason for this. Um, the benefit behind having multiple amino acid coding for the same, uh, multiple codons coding for the same, same amino acid is that if there were to be a mutation changing, let's say, this U uh, of this ACU codon, um, changing this U to any of the other letters, it's not going to have an effect on the, the protein because the amino acid coded by this codon is still the same as it was supposed to be before. Um, the next question says, why do some amino acids have more than one codon 
that's that's the reason that's the redundancy of having multiple codons coding for the same amino acid um, help reduce the effect of mutations um, next one is so it's here redundancy it minimizes harmful effects that incorrectly um, place nucleotides can have on the protein why do we care about the sequence of amino acid why do we care whether we have alanine first or you know, the next to be methionine or what the next amino acid is supposed to be. Why does that matter? So the amino acid sequence kind of provides the, the polypeptide the instruction to how to fold. So remember, um, I think a week ago, you, during your freshman advisory, you were trying to fold this paper pig, right? And there was instruction on how to fold this um, origami. So same idea for proteins. Proteins, you, uh, Proteins don't just work as a long chain of amino acid, as a polypeptide. It has to fold into a specific shape before it can function. So the sequence of amino acid provides the instruction on how a protein can fold. In fact, right now, even if we know the entire sequence of, um, of a protein, we as human beings cannot predict how exactly this protein is going to fold 100% um, because it's, it's, still, it's still kind of a mystery. Um, how your cell knows how to fold these proteins. Now, we did this practice in class, so we're going to skip this one. Let's continue on um, looking at a few more things about translation. So this right here is uh, to show you how translation works. You see? this We have tRNA coming in, adding amino acids onto a chain, right? three bases at a time, being read three bases at a time, connecting amino acids together. This is translation in action. We have our mRNA right here. These are tRNAs carrying something called anticodon, and then on the top we have these amino acids being connected together as the mRNA is being read. And then this large structure right here is supposed to be the ribosome, and the ribosome, so if this were to be your amino acid, the ribosome will go down the amino acid, uh, down, what did I say? <laughs> if this were to be your mRNA, the ribosome will move down the mRNA, reading three bases at a time, and um, add amino acids together into a polypeptide. Um, so here, here we have the other RNA called tRNA, which is called transfer, which means transfer RNA. What is a transfer? It's transferring amino acids onto the polypeptide chain. So if you see right here, first off, you can remember tRNA as it's, it's a T-shape. This is our tRNA right here. This tRNA carrying amino acid on one side, having anticodon on the other side, um, can transfer amino acid on this growing polypeptide chain. And the significance of this anticodon is that it's anti, meaning that it's the opposite of the amino acid codon. So remember earlier we used the amino acid chart, we read AUG for methionine, whatever. Um, we as human beings, we can read AUG methionine. Uh, but for tRNA, tRNA knows this supposed to be, let's say, oh, Let's say this is AUG. The tRNA knows it's AUG because it has the anticodon that can match with it. So it's like, uh, let's say you're trying to put the... Um, okay, let's say you're trying to put these caps on the marker, right? And then you can see that this cap doesn't exactly fit on this one, and this one doesn't fit on this one. So only the ones that actually match will be matched together. So is the so is the codon uh, versus anticodon. All right. So this right here shows you one more time. We have the tRNA carrying anticodon, um, carrying amino acid, the corresponding amino acid, the exact correct amino acid that um, should be connected to the grow, growing polypeptide chain. But when you're reading the um, the amino acid mRNA codon amino acid chart, you're still reading this mRNA, you're still reading CUA, and you're not reading the anticodon itself. Okay, so. All right, so this is, this is what you learned. tRNA molecules have an anticodon that's complementary to the mRNA codon. Now, um, carrying three bases and an amino acid, um, the correct tRNA will bind to the mRNA and the amino acid is transferred to the growing polypeptide chain, which is what we said. A sequence of amino acid is called a, polype poly a polypeptide, and then if the polypeptide folds, that's called a protein. Um, the order of the amino acid is, determines what protein is made, and the amino acid is determined by the 
mRNA sequence and mRNA sequence is determined by the DNA sequence. And then the folding of the polypeptide chain influences the properties of a protein. If the protein misfolds, it's just like when you're doing an origami and you're trying to make a pig, but if you misfold, this pig is not going to turn out to be a pig. And your protein that's misfolded is not going to be the correct protein, so it cannot function. Um, and then th that, that will not be good. All right. Um, so let's see. Let's try this. We have our mRNA right here, and we're trying to figure out what the next amino acid is supposed to be. So if you were to read the codon, the CAC, so the anticodon has to be uh, G, U, G, right? So out of all three of these, there's only one G, U, G, and it has the amino acid histidine. So the next amino acid that will be connected should be histidine. All right. Um, that's cat. <laughs> Hi, cat. All right, here's translation for you again. Codon, anticodon, tRNA, amino acid, polypeptide chain. Recap. Um, so these are all questions that uh, you sh should now be able to answer. And if you have any questions, I will be at the library in the morning as usual. I think we're done. Uh, we're, not, we're not done. I'm just kidding. So just take a look at this one more time. The steps of... Um, how we go from DNA to RNA to protein. First step is transcription. We have the template DNA turned into mRNA through complementary base pairs, paid base pairs, and then the next step is post-transcriptional modification where we have RNA splicing. We got rid of the introns, we put exons together in order to have a mature mRNA. The third step is we're reading the mRNA codons and um, connecting the corresponding amino acids until we get to the first stop codon. And when amino acid, when uh, translation starts, it's supposed to always start at AUG methionine, but on a test, even if you don't see AUG, because I can't even give you the same amount of amino acids as any real life amino acid is supposed to be, because they're all, well, uh, the proteins, because they're all so long. Um, uh, so you will just do the transcription and translation um, as is given. All right. Good luck studying, guys. I hope you learned something. So since uh, Marshy was left at home, we got to have a, another representation of some other animal be made of DNA, RNA, protein. See all these proteins on this cat? This is, this is my roommate's cat, Lucy. Bye.